Hey, what's up guys? Jackson here at Toasty DIY, and today we're gonna to be taking a peek at the Bamboo Lab A1 combo. Let's go ahead and unbox it and get to printing. So guys, I'm super excited to have the A1. Now this is the full size version, not the mini, which has the full size build plate of the P1S or the X1 Carbon. So you get a lot of room to be able to print really whatever you want. The only real difference is this one is a lot cheaper and it does not have an enclosure. It's printer just like the X1 and the P1S, you get 256 by 256 by 256 or 256 cubed. And they do make the unboxing experience and the setup experience super simple. Basically, you just rip off both of these pieces here and then you're gonna kind of pull up on everything. All right, so we got the printer out of the box. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and cut our protective wrap off. So inside of this large box, I see that we have our actual print bed cover, uh, which is basically your easy stick, easy peel and stick combo so that you can actually get your prints off really easily without having to use any sort of adhesive or anything, which I was very used to on my old printers. We also get our guides for the AMS light and the actual A1 printer. Now, this is the more expensive combo, if you will. They usually come in between 450 and 500 bucks. So we get a toolkit here. Uh, funny enough, I actually bought this separate. I have three of these now, but they also do actually include the swatch palette if you buy the AMS apparently. So once again, AMS light. So this is a little bit different than the uh, full-fledged universal AMS that works with some of their other printers. Uh, this is always fun. It's a little boat motor uh, so that you can 3D print a bench sheet and then put this on the back and actually use it in the water. And then all these parts up top right here, which I'm gonna probably just go ahead and leave this stuff in here and get it out in a minute. This is all of our AMS parts. So as you guys can see here, we have a few different pieces, but this is all part of our AMS. So we can kind of put these off to the side for now. And then the second layer is actually more AMS stuff. So these guys right here, quite a bit of stuff actually. It's a little bit bigger than it makes it look in the pictures. So uh, be prepared to have some desk space for all of these parts. Now, once we get past the AMS stuff, we get the actual 3D printer, uh, which is not too intimidating looking. Now, not quite as look put together as the X1 Carbon or the P1S because those are uh, you know, full frame units. They're enclosed, so you really don't have to do much setup with them. You basically just open them up and you can almost start printing right away. So as you guys can see here, here is the actual tower. Uh, this is what contains most of the motors on the actual unit, of course, besides the bed motor. And um, you know, one thing I noticed right away that's a lot different with how this printer is going to work uh, versus the X1 or the P1S. And this one's a lot more traditional where um, your X axis that goes up and down is actually just going to be on here. And the print bed's just only going to go back and forth or this direction here. So we have opened the instruction manual and as you can see, you get a what's in the box and it appears that everything that we need is here. Install the build plate. Uh, it looks like number one is going to be unlock the heat bed. Oh my gosh, these things are in here. Might have to use this side first. So we have a little bit of torque. There we go. Yeah, so they actually tell you to use the, uh, the foam padding when releasing the heat bed, which is something that I'm not doing right now, so I'm gonna try to be extra careful. And I will say, this already looks super nice. So next step is going to be to mate the base housing to the printer frame. So this big guy here to this here. And that little motor will actually go inside of the housing. And yeah, it actually kind of almost clicks into place. It sounded pretty, pretty satisfying, actually. All right, and we're gonna cut these zip ties here fully to the front end. So we're gonna push it fully towards the screen. So I think that's gonna be, oh yeah, just like that, okay. All right, we gotta install 10 screws, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the camera for you all. So we're gonna be installing these screws here. There's 10 of them. It literally says for the base housing. So once again, very streamlined, easy instructions. You're gonna use that same one that you used a minute ago. One thing I love that they do as well is anything that they want you to screw in, uh, you know, for the installation, uh, they mark with kind of like green and anything they want you to remove is marked with red. And then next up, it says to install two of these screws for the base housing and the highlighted holes gonna be towards, okay, that's the front. Go ahead and move this just to make sure you guys can see it. So we're gonna be using two more of those screws here and here. All right, so for the next step, it says to place on the table. Okay, looks like we got that done, right? Yep, and then this should be hanging off. And it looks like they're all, yeah, they're all labeled. So green's gonna go to green. 
And then after that, you're actually gonna take, it's a USB type C, which I always love to see. <laughs> and then we're gonna plug that in. So now we have the Z motor, the X motor, the camera, and then that USB type C for probably the screen plugged in. We got our cable nice and tucked away. All right guys, so the next step is going to be installing the purge wiper. And as you can see, that's actually right over here and slide that piece in. And then it's going to use one of the M3 by 12 screws, which actually already says right here for the purge wiper. So we're gonna pull out, looks like this, basically our spool holder. So just like that, it kind of actually clips into place and it's gonna get held in uh, with some coarse thread screws. We'll go ahead and pull those out. So this is for AMS stands. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these out. There should be four of these screws. We just got our four screws and there's actually one extra left over. So next up, we're gonna be installing, I believe that these are the spool holders. Uh, so we get two greens and two yellows. So I have the instructions oriented the same way. So it's gonna go green and yellow. You kind of kind of twist them a little bit, but you'll find a certain point where they kind of just clip on. There we go. So next step looks a little complicated, but nothing serious. We're going to be putting on the uh, Bowden tubes, essentially, or I guess they're similar to the Bowden tube. They're basically like individual tubes that actually uh, feed the printer. And these kind of just clip into place with pretty light pressure. It doesn't really take much. And it didn't really seem like it told us exactly like what orientation to put this side in. This side does sort of matter. The short tubes go one, two, and then three, four. I just kind of did what seemed like it made the most sense. And then over here, um, I try to just make, basically make them as untangled as possible. But it looks like at this point, it says to plug in the AMS connector, which is this guy right here, into the back of the printer. Well, there's two of them. So I guess in theory, maybe this can have more than one AMS lights on it. Now, if you're wondering what a couple of these extra parts are, uh, so like for example, this right here, this is going to be a single spool holder for if you just have uh, one spool. Cal calibration, calibrate for better printing quality, and it tells us how long this stuff takes, so sure, let's go for it. You're gonna see the 3D printer actually in action here, kind of moving around, doing some calibration. The fact that it is pretty much all auto calibrated. Um, so for $489 at the time of buying this specific combo, um, we get some really cool features, like of course, the multicolor printing. That's crazy. For under 500 bucks, we're able to print up to four spools at once. Um, and in theory, you could even kind of mix and match materials slightly as well. Like you could probably have some PETG with some PLA, um, assuming it allows you to actually uh, calibrate the heat levels for each ones of those. Um, you get active flow rate compensation, active motor noise cancellation, full auto calibration, you have a one clip quick swap nozzle. And once again, the print bread is 256 millimeters of total build volume and that's cubed. So 256 in all directions. Um, it can print something like the Binchy in 14 minutes, which is just insane. So I wanna show you guys, I got the app set up. We got the printer right here in the background with their filament ready to go. Uh, so I found this little 3D print that I think would be kind of cool for the garage. And as you can see, this one uses uh, two different colors and it tries to auto select them so we'll do let's do orange uh, where it would be blue and then white for the letters so that'll use a1 and a2 we are going to allow for the both the calibrations to be done we're only we only want one copy so we're going to go and press start print time lapse basically instead of like having a live video feed just takes like a time lapse feed for you so at this point, you're just gonna have to give it a minute. Everything's gonna start heating up and get going. And then uh, I'm gonna show you guys this actually printing. All right, guys, we just got done with our first print. And as you guys can see, out of the box with no real calibration, the 3D printer did all of the calibration work needed. We were able to get a very, very precise print uh, with really no imperfections in it. We even started off by using uh, the very first print, the AMS lights. We used two different colors. We used our number one and number two, so orange and white. And it's pretty cooled down now, so we should be able to go ahead and 
pull this off here. Yeah, there we go. So as you guys can see, uh, the textured uh, backplate really yields some amazing results. You actually kind of get like a uh, dimple effect like you would see on a lot of like plastics and car parts and whatnot. So super awesome. Um, and yeah, these things are just very accurate. They're very quick. I mean, this print, I think, finished in uh, under like 20 minutes, really. Um, you know, it's been about maybe five to 10 minutes calibrating because you can actually select each print if you would like to calibrate the printer or not. I will normally, uh, you know, if I'm like, after about maybe every two or three prints, I'll usually have it auto calibrate just to make sure everything's still good. But yeah, guys, I mean, super awesome. Like I said, I love these printers. My P1S is amazing at home. And honestly, this one just being uh, a couple hundred dollars cheaper and even cheaper with the AMS Lite um, is insane. And, you know, I would definitely highly recommend it. And the best part is, you know, you're always able to access it through the network. You have the camera and flashlight feature, uh, which you can also always access. As long as you don't turn this printer off, it is always ready to go. And the best part is you don't have fans running. You don't have like a super high uh, idle wattage. I think I read that while they're connected to Wi-Fi, they use between like four to 10 watts uh, while they're just sitting there idle, which is pretty close to just like phantom power usage, honestly. So yeah, definitely some amazing results. I really love uh, this printer and I'm excited to check out the X1 Carbon next. So if you guys want a video on that, make sure you check out Toasty DIY and we'll see you guys later. Peace out.